As far as I am concerned, I am a fundamentalist Muslim and I am proud to be a fundamentalist Muslim because I know and I strive to follow the fundamentals of Islam and I know that there is not a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. I challenge any human being to point out a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. There might be some fundamentals which someone might think they are against humanity. But the moment you give the logical background, there is not a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. When we go back in history, according to the Webster Dictionary, fundamentalist was first used to describe a group of American Protestant Christians who protested against the church. The Christian church, they believed that the Bible was the word of God. These American Protestant Christians, they not only believed that the Bible was the word of God, but they believed that every word, every letter of the Bible, it is the word of God. If anyone can prove every word, every letter of the Bible is the word of God, then this movement is a good movement. Whereas on the other hand, if anyone can prove that the Bible is not the word of God, then this movement is not a good movement. According to the Oxford Dictionary, fundamentalist is a person who strictly adheres to the ancient doctrine of any religion. And in the revised edition of the Oxford Dictionary, fundamentalist is a person who strictly adheres to the ancient doctrine of any religion, especially Islam. This word, especially Islam, has been added in the revised edition of the Oxford Dictionary. The moment you hear the word fundamentalist, you start thinking of a Muslim. You start thinking of an extremist. I tell the people, I am an extremist. I'm extremely kind. I'm extremely merciful. I'm extremely loving. I'm extremely just. I'm extremely honest. What's wrong in being an extremist? Why are we apologetic? But we should only be an extremist in the right direction. We should not be an extremist in the wrong direction. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 208. Enter into Islam wholeheartedly. You can't say partly. So why are we Muslims? Why are we apologetic? We have the best deen. We have the deen al haq with us. It's time for us to turn the tables over. The third misconception is that Muslims are terrorists. What is the meaning of the word terrorist? Terrorist by definition means a person who causes terror. Whenever a robber sees a policeman, he is terrified. So for the robber, the policeman is a terrorist. Whenever any criminal sees a policeman, he is terrified. So for the criminal, the policeman is a terrorist. Whenever any robber sees a Muslim, he should be terrified. Whenever any rapist sees a Muslim, he should be terrified. Whenever any anti-social element sees a Muslim, he should be terrified. Like the police, every Muslim should be a terrorist to the anti-social elements. I'm aware that this word terrorist it is more commonly used to terrorize an innocent human being. In this context, no Muslim should ever terrorize any innocent human being. And many a time, two different labels are given to the same person for the same activity. Sixty years back, when the Indians were ruled by the British government and there were people who were fighting for the freedom of the country and these people by the British government they were called as terrorists whereas by the common Indians they were called as freedom fighters as patriots same people same activity two different labels if we agree with the view of the British government that the Britishers had tried to rule over India, then you would call these people as terrorists. Whereas, 
if you agree with the view of the common Indians that the Britishers had come to the trade, they had no right to rule over us, then you would call these people as freedom fighters, as patriots. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 6, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in jaakum fasiqum binaba'in fatabayyanu, an tusibu qawman bi jahala, fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimeen. O you who believe, when a message comes to thee, check it up before you pass it on to the third person. We have the example of the American Revolution that took place in 17... 75. George Washington by the British government he was called as terrorist number one and later on he becomes the president of USA imagine terrorist number one becoming the president of USA and he happens to be the godfather of all the presidents including George Bush we have the example of Nelson Mandela when South Africa was ruled by the white apartheid government. Nelson Mandela was imprisoned in Robben Islands for more than 25 years. And by the white apartheid government, he was called as terrorist number one. Later on, when South Africa gets its freedom and the white apartheid government is thrown out, Nelson Mandela gets freedom. And he becomes the president of South Africa and gets the Nobel Prize for Peace. Imagine terrorist number one getting the Nobel Prize for Peace. So here we realize the media, whatever label it gives to a person, that label gets stuck to him. The media is very powerful. It can turn black into white, white into black, hero into villain, willing into hero. This is the power of the media. We Muslims, we are very backward. We need to use the same media, we have to make it halal, to strive to convey the message of Islam. And I do know that 99% things what come on the television, they are haram. But we need to use the same media, we have to make it halal, to strive to convey the message of Islam. See, today is the age of science and technology. The youngsters, they are going on the wrong track. We need to use the same media to bring the youngsters on the right track. And as long as we are within the purview of the Islamic Sharia, we need to use the same media. We have to make it halal to convey the message of Islam to the non-Muslims, to those who are unaware of it. The fourth misconception is that Islam was spread by the sword. Islam comes from the root word salam which means peace. It is also derived from the Arabic word silm which means to submit your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam was spread by the sword. Peace was spread by the sword. It's rather contradicting. Each and every human being in this world, he's not in the favor of maintaining peace. There are many who would like to disrupt it for their own gains. Therefore, force has to be used in order to promote peace and justice in the country. Similarly, in Islam, force can be used at the last resort in order to promote peace and justice in the country. And the best reply to the misconception that Islam was spread by the sword is given by the famous historian, Delasi O'Leary, in the book, Islam at the Crossroad, on page number eight, he says, that history makes it clear that however, the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword, over conquered races is the most fantastic absurd myth that historians have ever repeated.